So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, I want to talk about three things simultaneously and see how it goes, inshallah. Um, there is a very famous saying of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we're going to take a look at today, and that is, uh, "Bada Islam gariban." Islam started as something strange, and after that, the Prophet says, "Bada Islam gariban sayyudu gariba kama bada," and it will return back to being something strange. And so, there's uh, many other narrations to this point that we're going to look at. And uh, before I do that, I also want to talk about, you know, this thing that the, that that we're putting over our faces, uh, this uh, uh, negative covering, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, very problematic, as I will talk about uh, slowly as I talk about, because I'm going to inter inter interweave uh, three, four different topics today. So one, I'm going to be talking about the ghoraba. And the second thing I'll be talking about, this thing that we're being forced to put on our faces. And uh, the third thing I'm going to be talking about is the book of Kitab al Fitan by Nu'im bin Hamad, and which is a very important book on the end of times. But it needs to be properly, the book needs to be properly understood and it needs a proper uh, explanation and commentary for that hadith book, which I'm in the process of translating. Alhamdulillah, I've done the translation. And I'm adding commentary notes now in different ways, which I will explain later. <coughs> and uh, the fourth thing is I want to uh, bring to people's attention there's a way to uh, help me speed up this process of uh, bringing this book into reality. Um, you know, if I can hire somebody uh, to go through all of the references and uh, quotations to do a proper tahqiq, because it's very important can't write a book as a scholar and have uh, you know any serious mistakes in it every book except for the book of Allah will have mistakes no matter how many people you hire to uh, review the book but I need to hire some ulama or one or two ulama to kind of like at least one alim to kind of like review the book and make sure all the references are correct or any other ideas that they may have after they review the book <coughs> anyway Let's go back to this thing that we're being forced to put on our faces. Uh, but before we do that, actually, let's look at the narration of the Prophet Wasallam that I'm going to show you over here. It, this is part of my translation of Nu'im bin Hamad's Kitab al Fitan book. And so we're also going to learn partly about the methodology being used to understand how to look at these end of time narrations that not all of them are very authentic okay not all of them are very authentic and so in that case uh, we have to find other authentic sources that connect with the sources that are not so authentic but can come under the same heading and basic title as you will see i will explain this to you inshallah ta'ala <coughs> now coming back to the thing that they are uh forcing on our faces uh, you know this thing now if there is uh, you know something some microbes coming out of me right and if they're getting stuck in the mask and I'm in the house with 10 people and 10 people put this mask down and uh, this mask has the microbes and the air is still there carrying those microbes everywhere in the room in the house because the house is closed it's even worse than you know being outside so now you got 10 masks that the air is because it's not like you take the mask and you clean it and everything goes into the water and into the sink and into the into the sewage system the mask is still there and you're going to still wear it on your face so what's the difference between um the microbes being in the air uh directly uh let's say in a closed place and the microbes uh, going on this mask and then the mask, still air is touching this mask. And what? The air is still picking up the microbes. So now you've got a closed house with 10 masks. And the microbes are still in the air in that closed environment. So now let me go back to uh, the this particular saying of the Prophet Wasallam, So that we can understand methodology. And we can also understand uh, um, how to deal with this. Okay. Uh, so, 
uh, and, uh, so the narration is قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا حَذَرَ الْغَرِيبِ Okay, before I do this, let me mention the famous uh, narration of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in regards to the strangers, right? So everybody knows this hadith إِنَّ الْإِسْلَامُ بَدَأَ غَرِيبًا Islam started as something strange, right? سَيَعُودُ uh, غَرِيبًا And it will return to being something strange. فَتُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَ So hooray and some uh, of the narration say Tuba is a place in Jannah uh, or a tree in Jannah so on and so forth but it doesn't matter Tuba means congratulations or uh, so the Prophet said or, or glad tidings you can say so the Prophet said فَتُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَ so uh, the Congratulations or good tidings to the people that are Ghuraba. So now <clears throat> we are going to understand who are the Ghuraba and how will this come about and how will Islam become Gharib in the sense of the word. So <clears throat> the narrator continues to say, Qala qila man ghuraba. And, uh, and it was said, who are the Ghuraba? Who are the people that are strangers? There are people who have left their families and their tribes. Now, why did they, these people that are Ghuraba, leave their families and tribes? They left these families and tribes to do Hijrah. And because they were living a different lifestyle. And in order to save themselves, they most likely will join a jama, join a group of people and leave their families and friends. Be why? To save their iman. And why? Because they're strangers. They believe in things and their social values like this whole uh, Circus 19 situation we got. Their values are going to be very, very different at the end of the day, 20 years down the line, 30 years down the line. They will see themselves as we're just straight. No, no one, No one agrees with me. And it's like what the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there will come a time, the hour won't come till the liars are believed and the, the one that's truthful is disbelieved. So if I say, look, the, the, this, uh, the, the largest microbe, okay, the largest one, and the tightest thread you have on this thing that which you use to cover your face, right, that largest microbe, uh, whatever it is, will go through that like an open, open big window, like big, like open gates. Okay, nothing's going to stop it. If I say this, I'm not going to be taken as a credible source, but, you know, CNN and BBC and Bill Gates and all these other liars will be taken as a credible source. So, Muslims will be living in a situation that what? That uh, the, the true Muslims will be, 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 be around people that have bought into this, these lies. One lie after another lie and after another lie and after another lie. And then you don't even know where to begin with your family members. And you feel isolated. And uh, there's another narration which I don't have with me here. But uh, I w when I was doing my referencing, I saw it and I wanted to show it to you. And that is the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself said, Who are the ghuraba? They are yuslahuna uh, bainan. They are people who make things, try to make things right between people. They'll try to make the things right when there is fasad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as, or okama qala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, we know this famous narration, Bada Islam Ghariban Sayyidu Ghuraba. So, if you are feeling alone, and you're feeling like no one's listening to you, and no one is uh, caring about what you're saying, even though you understand what you're thinking, and what you know, you know fully, and you understand what you know fully, but no one's willing to listen to any other narrative than the narrative that's being sp spun uh, in the social media and in, in the outlets of TV and so on and so forth. So now that we studied this uh, famous narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Inna al-Islam bada'a ghariban Indeed, Islam started as something strange. Sayyudu ghariba, And it will return to being something strange. Fatuba lil ghuraba. So congratulations or good tidings to the strangers. These are people who are going to have to leave their families, right? And they will be with other strangers, right? They will be with other strangers because they will not be family members. 
And about this, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now I'm going to show you. So, as you know, this hadith that I just showed you, there are many of these narrations. This is a very authentic narration. You know, there are, it's in Muslim, Abu Dawud, Tirmizi, Nisai, Ibn Majah, uh, <coughs> this particular narration that I just shared with you. Okay. So, uh, now let me go to now the book of Kitabul Fitan, which is a very important book in regards to the end times. So, but as you know, when it comes to narrations that have to do with the end times, there are many, many narrations that are fabricated and many, many narrations that are what muhaddisin call munkar. Okay, they're to be rejected. So, what is one methodology in which we can perhaps look at a hadith that now there's many reasons for this? For example, in early Islam, the focus was on. Uh, referencing hadith and ahadith based upon and looking and observing and researching and researching and figuring out mostly the time was spent on figuring out the ahadith that have to do with what we call hadith al uh, ahadith that have hukum in it to do this or to do this and this is how to pray this is how to do wudu this is how to do umrah this is how to do hajj if this is authentic or not authentic and the prophet وسلم, did this and what's the judgment on that so these narrations, because of also political reasons, they wanted to support somebody from that land or this land. So there were many narrations regarding end of times that were uh, fabricated or uh, you can say um, uh, misquoted, misused. So we have to be careful when we are looking at any group of hadith that have to do with end of times. So this book by the teacher of Imam Bukhari, uh, Nu'aim bin Hamad, which I'm going to tell you more about uh, his uh, authenticity. But he was the teacher of Imam Bukhari and he he has a book on Kitab al Fitan. He has a, kitab, a book on the Book of Fitan with more than 2,000 narrations of what will happen in the end of times. And meaning, particularly after the Prophet is moving on, because most narrations about the predictions of the future have to do with two. Uh, time periods. Number one is the end. If there is a narration that this and this will happen, the hour will not happen until this happened, it's usually about the time period right before the hour. And then there's not that much about the situation in the middle of the ummah. And then there is the second largest group of hadiths, which is about what the Prophet narrated about what will happen basically immediately right after him for the next 50, 60 years, you can say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam including, for example, the shahada or the death of his grandchildren, so on and so forth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? So now, let's look at this uh, narration. Oh, I wanted to tell you something else about, you know, this thing that they put on the face, they force us to do. You know, one of the worst places of germs, you can look this up, one of the worst places of germs is money, okay? it Money is... You know, before it comes into your pocket, it's it travels almost, you know, almost like how many hundreds of people, right? Any any dollar bill travels maybe hundreds of people before it comes into your pocket. Now you put your mask in that pocket and your money is touching that uh, thing that you put on your face. And then all the diseases of that uh, dollar bill that's been going through hundreds of hands is now on your mask. And now you're going to put that on your face and breathe that that bacteria that you know it's it's worse than the toilet the the dollar the dollar bill okay the dollar bill is dirtier than the toilet so you now have this dollar bill with your mask and uh, and now you're breathing it when you put the thing on okay so why am i going over this uh, narration of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is uh, for two reasons number 1 to show the importance of this book. Number two, that all the Muslims that are out there that understand what is going on, many of them feel alienated. And so I want to give you the gift of the Prophet Wasallam, the Bushra and the glad tidings of the Prophet Wasallam, because we don't understand the main hadith is there, the one that is very, very authentic that we just went through. But that Islam Gariban Gariba. Islam started as something strange and returned to something strange. And then Fatuba Lil Ghuraba. May Allah make amongst those us amongst the strangers 
who uh, people don't get, you know. Uh, okay, so now, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا حَذَرَ الْغَرِيبِ إِذَا حَذَرَ الْغَرِيبِ انْتَفَتْ عَنْ يَمِينُهُ وَعَنْ شِمَالُهُ فَلَمْ يُرَى إِلَّا غَرِيبًا So this man who is غريب, meaning he's a stranger, he's going to die, and when he dies, he looks to his right, and he see, looks to his left, and he sees no one but strangers. Okay, he's away from his family, as we already discussed in the definition of غريب. Okay, فَلَمْ يَرَى إِلَّا غَرِيبًا That person who he sees no one except him, except people he doesn't know, strangers. Okay, فَتَنَفَّسْ كِتَابُ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ So that person, he will breathe the book of Allah, meaning he will be reading as he's dying, some parts of the Quran as he's dying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِي لَهُ بِكُلِّ نَفَسَ نَفْسَهَا أَلْفَ أَلْفَ حَسَنَا And as he's doing this, for every breath, he will get a hundred thousand good deeds. وَخَطَّ عَنْهُ أَلْفَ أَلْفَ سَيِّئَا And when he uh, it, it breathes every breath, he breathes, not only gets 100,000 good deeds, he gets 100,000 evil bad deeds removed because of him dying in a state of Islam in such a difficult situation and after such a difficult sacrifice and after all this loneliness and alienation, he finally, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward people according to the difficulties. And then the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا مَاتَ مَاتَ شَهِيدًا And when he dies, he dies as shaheed. Now this hadith is not uh, very authentic. It's da'if. It's weak. But what it connects to the idea of being gharib and that there will come a time where people will be dying as strangers and they will not have family members around them as we have in the authentic narrations of the Prophet Okay, uh, To over here, I'll just uh, read this English translation. Uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when it is time for the stranger to die, let him turn to his to the right and to the left. And if he sees only a stranger, let him breathe in the books of God. Meaning, read, breathe in the books of God, meaning let him read Quran as he's dying. With every breath, he will gain a hundred thousand good deeds and a hundred thousand evil deeds will be erased from him and he dies as a shaheed. To better understand this, the idea, ghuraba, we can also look at this hadith in which the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ أَكْثَرُ مِن ذِكْرِ الْحَمَذَاتِ الْحَادِمِ الْلَزَّاتِ الْمَوْتِ Remember that thing that does away with desires, death. فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَأْتِي عَلَى قَبْر يَوْمٌ إِلَّا تَكَلَّمْ فِيهِ فَيَقُولْ and there comes no day on the person of the grave except the grave says to him, right? فِيهِ فَيَقُولْ أَنَا بَيْتُ الْغُرَبَ I'm the house of the strangers, right? You're all, no one knows you. No one recognizes you. No one knows you're even alive here, right? وَأَنَا بَيْتُ الْوَاحِدِ And I'm the house of the one who's alone. وَأَنَا بَيْتُ التُرَابِ And I'm the house of dust. وَأَنَا بَيْتُ الدُّودِ And I'm the house of worms, okay? And then what I'm also doing in this book is to quoting other sources that are saying, uh, talking on the same topic. Okay, this hadith I've already mentioned to you. But in al Islam, bada gharibun sayyud gharib fatuba lil ghuraba, right? Then, as you will see in the next hadith, okay, it says clearly an Ibn Abbas radiyallahu an qala maut al ghuraba shahada. The dying as a stranger, those people for which the Prophet says congratulations to them, is shahada. Imam Sayyuti in his book Abwabu Sa'ada fi Asbabu Shahada, right, also mentions this as a cause of shahada. So this is the type of referencing that we have to do, that when we mention a hadith that's weak, we have to fix it together with another hadith that's on the similar topic that is authentic to show that there is some merit to this week hadith and then also quoting what other scholars may have quoted the believers will feel lonely and feel estranged from the people of the world 
modernity is already known to cause alienation, meaning modernity is defined by loneliness. But after this depopulation and after this uh, situation that we're in, and many situation, many of the places, there will be very few Muslims because all of them have been killed and a person will be all alone. And so for the true believers, this will be even further, uh, they will be further alienated in a world that is already has alienation as its hallmark based on some earlier traditions that it seems it can also be the depopulation that causes this situation. Okay. <coughs> then from Imam Tabarani Fil Kabir, I quote another narration of the same uh, type. Okay. This is also by Ibn Abbas. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Mawtul gharib shahada the mouth of the ghuraba of the of the strangers is shahada idha hadara fa yarmi basarahu bi yaminihi wa yasarahu wa falam yara illa ghariban so the man who's dying he looks to his right he looks to the right he sees no one but strangers he doesn't have anyone from his family he had to leave his family to save his iman kind of like the ashab al kahf wa dhakara ahlahu wa waladahu and he thinks about his children and his family. فتنفس فله بكل نفس يتنفسه يمحو الله عنه ألف ألف سيئة. And then he remembers his children and his family, and for every breath, a hundred thousand evil deeds are removed. Uh, and then ويكتب له ألف ألف حسنة. And every uh, breath, a hundred thousand good deeds are written. Now, these narrations are not very authentic, but putting together, uh, for example, for this hadith, if you'll see, Rawa Tabrani Fil Kabir, and it says, Fihi Umru bin Hussein, uh, Aqili, wa huwa matruk. And this person, because of this person, that chain of narrations is weak, and he says, This person is to be left. But, putting together all of the narrations that talk about this topic, for example, uh, it has some authenticity. Also, another thing that uh, I will explain uh, in the book, and I, I will explain here too, as long as there's no hukam, there's no shari hukam to do this, or this is halal, or these are the rules to such and such, and it has fadila in it, meaning some, uh, you fadila meaning some, uh, blessings in it that if you did this or if this happened then this is the result uh, then that can be accepted okay so now uh, let me share with you and you know everyone has all these uh, things from the face you know in the streets and the garbage everywhere you don't think the air picks up the microbes from there and then passes it around the world you know these these people it's it's like you're going to believe uh, the liar and you're going to reject the truthful person that's fine but tell me you know uh, if the if the thing if the if the if the if the microbes uh, if you want to call it that are on this mask you know they're on this mask and the masks are all over the street what difference does it make if it went directly into the air or if the air will pick it up What's the difference? And then you also have the problem of oxygen levels. You put this thing on your nose, you know, and some people have two, three, four layers and God knows what. You know, what's, do you know the most important thing that needs to go inside you is oxygen and it needs to go to your brain? What happens to you when constantly you're 30%, 20%, 40% less in your intake of your oxygen? Do you know the harm you're doing to your body and to your brain, just making yourself dumber? Right? So, now let's come back to the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. So, the Prophet says, Bada Islamu Gharib and Sayyidu Gharibah. I want this to be a lesson for those people that uh, tell me very often that, you know, there's no one here to, who agrees with me, no one here that, you know, listens to me, no one here that, you know, that I can, you know, I don't, you know, they feel like they're alone. And so, if you want a good deed done, then pass this video on to the people that are also agreeing with us and understand with us that there's a bigger agenda of 
in this situation that we're in and that uh, that's because people feel alone and you need to feel that you are inshallah and that I am and that you are and that we are inshallah ta'ala amongst the ghuraba the Prophet gave congratulations to and that inshallah at our deathbed we will be like the shaheed okay and uh, in fact uh, talking about this subject I will share with you another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kun fi dunya ka'annaka ghari be in the world as if you're a stranger meaning put yourself and your awareness at a level that is what above other people okay you see the world in a different paradigm and other people see the world in a different paradigm some people are seeing this world oh we're going to have this great technology and this great uh, you know bio uh, technology and we're going to have gene therapy and we can have babies with blue eyes or green eyes or whatever we want and there's going to be one group of people like that another group of people that are going to be like this is very immoral what is being done this is vicious and this dhulm and this is unjust and this all needs to come down and it will come down and it'll come crashing down and it will lead to wars and the fall of nation states uh now uh about the book of uh the the book of uh Nuaim bin Hamad the one I'm translating coming back to the importance of uh Nuaim bin Hamad's uh book these are about uh you know about 18 different references of people who have quoted throughout history uh, you know whether it's Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad or it's Tariq al-Baghdad or Tariq al-Kabir or Rijal al-Bukhari uh, the uh, writings of Ibn Habban right uh, so these uh, are very famous uh, people and books and that uh, have quoted the teacher of Imam Bukhari in their books, including Imam Bukhari in Rijal al-Bukhari and as well as uh, Tariq al-Kabir or Tariq al-Bukhari. <coughs> um, anyway, so this is what I wanted to uh, show you. And then I also want to show you about this uh, particular book. So regarding the book of Nu'im bin Hamad, again, uh, one of the scholars, Abu Bakr, who is known as Abu Bakr, Abdul Ghaffar bin Muhammad bin Hussein bin Ali bin Hassan. Uh, he says, Who is Shaykh al Salih? He is a righteous Shaykh. Al Abid Mu'mar. He's a right, he's an Abid worshipper. Musnad uh, wa Thaqat. And uh, he's, uh, his, 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 his Musnad is, uh, uh, you can say, legitimate. Rahla ilayhi min al balad, and then you know he says about uh, his. Uh, and then you also have other scholars saying that who uh, Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Ahmad, sama majmu'i tabrani kabir wa saghir wa fitan bin Naim bin Hamad bin Abi Qasim tabrani. So these are people who have referenced uh, him. Okay, Imam Tabrani also, and then people have also doubted some of his narrations. So, مُخْتَلِفْ فِيهِ فَقَالَ جَوْزِ فِي دُعَفَاء There are weak hadith, matruk al-hadith. It's best left alone. قَالَ ذَهَبِ فِي الْمِزَانِ مَا عَلِمْتُ بِهِ بَعْسِ But Zahabi, another scholar, says, I know of no wrong, anything wrong in it, in, in what he said. وَنَقَلَ ابن حجر فِي لِسَانِ عَنْ إِبْنْ يُونِسْ تَكَلِّمُوا فِيهِ And he said, go ahead and talk about what's in this book. وَعَنْ مُسْلِمْ بِنْ قَاسِمْ لَيْسَ إِنْدَهُمْ بِالثِّقَةِ And Qasim, he says, they don't have thiqa. It's not very strong a hadith. So this is, now when you look at this, okay, then uh, you come to the understanding that it is perhaps uh, better to use the ahadith because it's talking about end of times, but to have a filtering process, which is what the commentary is for. 
<coughs> and then I showed you you can uh, take a hadith but then find other ahadith that are more authentic and then finally the idea is to connect all of this to the Quran right so for example in this case aktharahum la ya'lamun aktharahum la yu'minun most of the humanity doesn't follow the right way so the idea of the ghuraba in that sense makes sense right and so we want to take a weak hadith and if there is authentic stronger hadith connected to those and if it those authentic hadith then are able to connect to quran and give the same basic message then that is what we want to do now if there's a weak hadith and there's no authentic hadith and there's no quran that's double bad which we will then note down this hadith does not connect in any way and this is the only hadith that's saying this there's no other hadith collaborating this and uh, if there is a hadith that directly connects with quran or if there's a hadith that directly connects to other a stronger hadith but does not connect to quran so all of these things will inshallah ta'ala be discussed i want to end with two points number one if you are one of those who are sad and feel lonely, don't feel lonely because the Prophet is patting your back and the Prophet is saying glad tidings to you. And if you were to die, you would die in a state of barakah. And inshallah, we will all die in a state where uh, we're like the ghuraba, strangers of the world. Okay, Even when we will have our jama'ah, we may not have our family. So Allah knows best uh, because, you know, uh, a lot of us may have our families. Some of us won't have our families. But those people who have to make the sacrifice and make the sacrifice, the Prophet is encouraging them and telling them, you're not alone. And there's so many Muslims who are all strangers, but we just don't know each other, right? And so the idea is to get to know one another. And uh, the last thing that I want to mention, if you look at the comment section or the description section, for help if you feel like Allah put it in your heart to help me in regards to finishing this book off with proper references and all of that uh, then please do feel like donating I'm thinking I need around four or five thousand dollars to get the proper people to do the referencing and every everything else that I need done and Allah knows best so this is the message for today your thing you wear on your face does not work it reduces your oxygen level it it does not do away with the disease anyway because the air is still there no matter where you put the mask so if it's if there is a disease inside you for example okay it goes into air directly in this case some of it goes on the mask and then you put the mask in a closed environment like your house could possibly cause more damage right and then you're putting this mask in your pocket with money and so on and so forth that's just adding germs to the whole scenario. Um, and then, uh, of course, the uh, glad tidings of the Prophet for every Muslim who is aware of what's happening. فَتُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاء اللَّهُمَ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ So, hooray and congratulations for the ghuraba. If you feel alone, then that might be a good sign. And if you feel alone and you feel like no one's listening to you, and that your family members are looking down upon you and you feel uh, kind of like uh, you're, you're alone on this journey, then you are not alone. In fact, there are many, many Muslims like you. And you should then console yourself that if the Prophet was uh, here, he would be consoling you and telling you, you are those strangers. You are like those strangers. And congratulations for you and carry on. Okay, good, good for you that you understood what this whole scenario is about. At least you understood it more than the others. And may Allah give guidance to the others. And may Allah give guidance to us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to explain it to the others. Okay, and then finally, the third thing is that uh, I, I went through the book of Nu'aim bin Hamad on purpose to show you kind of like what I'm doing and what methodology I'm using. And if it comes in your heart that you should support me, then inshallah ta'ala make your intention. You're doing this, uh, you know, to help the cause of Islam. And that Allah put barakah in your money and then uh, feel free to donate me 
at the PayPal link that's in the description or in the comment section. Okay, Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.